Hello everyone and welcome to part 2 of this week's update video of uh, Lawrence Place Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2. And in uh, the last video I talked about how I've been getting on with uh, Deep Space Science, but during that time everyone else has been also, also been off being busy with things as well, so let's take a look into it. The first thing to talk about is over here, down at the bottom of the energy science, where where I where we've been making matter science. Because uh, a while back, I came in here and, and started making matter science one, and that was uh, and the reason I built it over here is because it takes in a number of the uh, the memory the data cards from uh, from energy science, but also some of the stuff from material science as well. So around here seemed like a good place. Bring in the bring in the extra cards that I needed. Bring them down here. Can make all the various different ones like the um, magnifying glass data, the imperial data, bacon and microwave bacon data. Make all of those around here and get that get that. That one running. So Tristan has now come and he's he's get he's started to make the catalogues for um, Matter Science 2. And as you can see, this takes um, a number of different a number of completely new um, data cards, but he's made all of them in in at least some sort of quantities. And for some reason, he's done the whole thing in reverse. So he's put the advanced research server at the top here, this, and this one requires advanced research servers rather than normal research servers. But okay, fine. Uh, so you can get on with that. And then uh, and then he started making them all. So he's gone matter utilization data. Of, uh, next and and so on down the line. So let's take a bit of a look at these and talk about what they all require. This one for example takes in the magnetic canisters and this conveniently we, we have quite a lot of these around because I brought them up and or, or at least I start I brought them um, I brought up the the basic canisters these dull ones up here and then started uh, charging them up and turning them into the magnetic ones as well and as you can see we're using up quite a steady stream of those of so both of those and I think we might need some more machines making them this seems to be a little limited but anyway that means there are now a there's now a supply of the magnetic canisters available that can pour down to pour down here he's going to this machine so that's I mean that's a fairly fiddly and costly thing anyway but at least we've at least we've already started making them it also requires AI cores, and you may remember from a week or two ago that those are being made right up here at the top of the um, at the top of the biological area because, well, uh, Mark I think originally put this in because we needed to have we needed to have them in, in in relatively small quantities for making I don't know supercomputers or something I I can't remember but they're made out of all kinds of biological stuff like these bi these biological Riddler data cards and, um, and and this bio goo here and also Emersite just to be just to be awkward and 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 and. Um, uh, quantum computer processors as well, and so I stole a load of those away with a belt that went all the way across here to go over into the um, in, into the uh, tower of construction, and started making started making stuff over here out of them. Fine, um, but Tristan has now also put in an additional station here that comes along. It picks them up. There's a there's a warehouse here that is clearly um, is this loading a train? Yeah, uh, yes, it is loading up the train with AI cores. But then it will also pass them out around here so they can be made into other stuff. So he's got um, he's got the AI cores being brought down, and those well. As you can see by the rate this train is being loaded up at, I feel like this probably needs to be a bit quicker. Um, at the moment, it does seem to be okay, I have to admit, but the matter science is, is being done relatively slowly at the moment. So I think another machine doing this would be quite a good idea, and that's going to mean we're going to need at least one... one uh, we're going to need to at least double the, the machines over here. And they are already speed moduled, so we could put in a bacon along here to, to make them run a lot, a lot faster, and then put in twice as many machines as well. I think that's probably going to be the way to go, because as you can see, we're just ripping through all of these at quite a rate with no end in sight because we need a lot of the AI cores because that is now apparently a, a thing that is needed for basically everything. And then down here, so yes, well, how, how, how's this going on? So it's, yes, it's bringing in the magnetic canisters, the AI cores. It's also bringing in the ba microwave bacon data from up here. So hopefully that's being made fast enough. It does seem to be keeping up um, pretty much. There is a lot of extra scrap being produced as part of this. But these data cards, I mean, they're it's not full, but it's also not empty, so I guess that's probably okay for the time being. And it also takes in matter, and I'll talk about that in a moment, because it definitely matters. And the thing is, all of these things get brought along here, they get they all get fed in, but then quite a lot of them come back out again, so he's had to do a certain amount of um, return return processing. So we've got the, uh, be spitting everything out here as you normally do, and then we've got the energy catalogs, uh, the, no, the magnetic canisters being fed in along here. Um, I'm not sure what all these ones on this side, where these ones on this side of the belt have come from. I guess that must have been another, they must have been put there as somewhere to put them. Um, and then because the la inserters are lazy, they always take from the near side of the belt. So it's never going to use these ones up. However, the other ones can pop onto the other side of the belt now, so they'll get used up first. That's fine. What I guess probably happened is that, there, is that previously there was a belt just doing that. And so they all stacked up along this side of the belt because inserters put stuff out onto the top, onto the far side. And they didn't get used up. And Tristan went, oh no, so he did that. And that's sorted that problem out, and that's probably why there's a backlog of them along there. I, I, I would guess. 
Um, and then also the other thing, what's the other thing that comes out? Um, is the oh, it's the AI course. So they come back round down here and they go onto this belt. And they oh, okay. So they yes. So along here, they'll come back out around here and along to here. And then because they're on the the uh, the upper side, the left hand side of the belt, I suppose as it comes around here, or the port side, perhaps I should say, uh, they will be used up before the ones on the other side of it. So there's there's a priority thing going on there as well. But also they're vanishing down the belt for goodness knows what sort of other reasons. Matter is another thing, and that and, and again that matter appears to be a fluid. So we have this sort of fluidized matter I don't know it, it, but it goes round and round in circles we you get three quarter you get uh, two thirds of it back or slightly more than um, and that, that can go then back round here so as long as we have there's presumably going to be a system somewhere that makes sure there's a little bit of headroom in the tanks so that never overflows um, yes down here in fact we have matter being produced and then, then these pumps along here are only producing it when there's an allowable amount of it so the matter production is an interesting one this is rather expensive so as you can see at the moment we've got these matter plants uh, and they're taking in material testing back matter catalogs and particle stream, all these things along here. And all of these things are, I mean, they're, they're, they're kind of pricey. The material testing packs need a little bit of everything. So individually, they're not too bad, but, they, but having a, a huge number of them is, is going to be a bit, um, a bit much. Then the matter catalogs. Well, that requires all of the matter processing that's going on up here. All of this, all of this stuff here. Now, it doesn't require any actual matter to do this, but there is a lot of stuff going into that. So we're now taking the. Um, the catalogs, as well as putting them onto the train down this belt here, most all the ones that are being made now are pouring down this belt in order to come down here to be made just to be made into straight up this matter fluid, uh, and that's a little bit that's a little bit of a problem, and I don't think we want to do that for too long if we can if we can possibly avoid it. And then there's some particle stream as well, which is another kind of pricey thing, um, and some of that is apparently being kicked out some, uh, from this machine as well. So we've got another thing here, making sure there's always some headroom available in this tank. So yeah, there's a lot of sort of round and round and rounding going on in the, in this in this system in general. But then I guess that's how you make Factorio a little bit more difficult and a little bit more complicated. It's more fun to put in challenges like that rather than just going, okay, this is a tier umpteen uh, recipe, so we're going to make it cost a bajillion resources in order to make it. Although it does cost a bajillion, bajillion resources as well. It also kicks out a load of scrap, which goes going down here, down the disposal system, and apparently this was kicking out so much of it that Tristan has put in an additional belt that runs up here, along here like this, uh, and then when it gets up to about here, then just goes, nope, and goes straight across, takes a shortcut over, and goes straight into the scrap reprocessing system over here. And so, I mean, that makes a lot of sense. Most, uh, to be honest, most of the scrap that's coming up here is from the matter process, matter one. Most of the stuff coming up here is from matter two, and then that's all just getting fed in. And it seems that the recycling system is keeping up. Uh, what's going to happen when we start doing big researches that require both uh, material science and matter science? I dread to imagine. But then we're going to have three belts of solid scrap coming along here from the material science, another two coming out of the matter science, and goodness knows what from anywhere else. Um, <clears throat> I don't know whether the system is going to be able to keep up. We shall see how it goes. So yes, at the moment we are making this, and it is rather expensive. Expensive. However, I did a little bit of poking around in the recipes, and it turns out you can turn basically anything into matter. So we can turn excess iron ore, or um, excess mineral water, or quartz, or bromus oil, whatever. All of these things can be turned into matter. So I guess we're going to have to have a. We're going to end up with a system at some point that takes these overflows from the um, fr from the core processing up here. So at the moment, as you can see, the stone is being poured in here to make landfill. Uh, we seem to actually be using everything else at the moment. But some, as, you as you've seen in previous episodes. Uh, we, we are frequently not using at least one of the uh, different one of one of the ores, and so that could then be dumped into a train as a just sort of here is some stuff that we want to get rid of, and then that could be shipped up into orbit and then turned into matter using all of these recipes. So there is there are recipes for basically every sort of every sort of raw resource to turn it into into matter, and so that and these are then these are going to be much much cheaper. Uranium is a good one. You get 47, 47.1 for ten dull, dull uraniums, for example. So yeah, the, these are all ways of turning resources into something a bit more useful and so since we have all of these overflows in here already that we're at the moment we are just turning them into landfill but if we could turn them into something a bit more useful that would be fantastic and so the but these are lots of um, lots of researches that we can't do yet because they require they require deep space science pack 2 and matter science pack too. So we are very, very close to being able to do these. So I'm going to suggest that once, as soon as we can, or as soon as we can, as long as as long as there's nothing else sort of of very, very high importance, we probably want to come in and do the um, probably probably the the rare metal, the stone, the iron, and the copper ones because those are the things that tend to overflow along here, and just take those away and turn them into and start turning them into matter because that'll be a, that'll be a much much cheaper way of of producing it rather than burning all of these catalogs and the testing packs and. And the and the um, particle stream, all of which are 
relatively expensive things, at least when you compare them to the, the, the absolute junk that we will have coming out of the core processing. So, yes, that is make, making the matter, and it's, it's, it's a relatively slow process, uh, but it is, it is indeed making some, and it seems to be just about enough to keep the system running at the moment. And so, coming back up here, yes, it is, it is as, as you can hear, as you can see, it is, it is running, um, making another lovely strange sound. And then pumping the occasional card out onto the onto the belts up here to go up to into the into the processing here. Now and again, this is this is it is a bit slow. We've got one machine here making the uh, making the, the catalogs. This will need to be expanded and have speed modules put in, and so on and so on. But you know, it's a proof of concept as as that as that sort of thing goes. It is working. It is producing some of the required thing. Yes, matter utilization data. We are utilizing the matter, and we are, and uh, the data is coming out the other other side. So that's great. I mean, as I say, there might be some, there might be a little bit of reinforcing the supply required here and there. But basically, it's working quite nicely. The next one on the list is uh, matter stabilization data because Tristan's working up from the bottom, as I said. Um, and this is one that is faintly similar. It takes in an, another AI core. Um, this one taking AI cores? Yes, this one did. Uh, it takes in another AI core, it takes in the experimental alloys data, so Tristan will have had to have found a way to bring that over. And I talked about how we do that in the previous video, but basically it's, you, you have one of these trains, it will go over to the uh, the material science area, you have a thing that spits out the appropriate, you, then you, you put in a brake that will pull out the appropriate cards, it comes on a train over to here, and then you tell the train that when there's a, a shortage of it, you tell the train to clear off and go and, get, go and get some more, because you're gonna need it. I don't know why the train isn't here, it probably should be, but never mind, it's over there picking it up. Uh, so this is the experimental alloy data, yes. Uh, and so that's, that's, yes, that's brought over here. And then also we need the uh, matter containment data, which has been brought in up here. Oh, yeah, and that's, that's quite neat, because both of these require both AI cores and matter containment data, or the microwave bacon data, as I've been calling it. Um, he's put, just put a splitter in there, so, that, yep, that's nice and neat and easy. Very good. Um, and it'll, it, this produces in much the same way. And again, you've got the same sort of return on of, of some of some of the stuff. So we've got a belt that brings the uh, the the AI, AI cores back up here, where they can then be squirted back in the side to be reused. And the uh, and the matter is done in the same way with a, with a loop of pipe work over here. So yeah, and it it's all all, all fairly fairly simple stuff. It just you just need to sort of build it up and build it up and, and follow, follow follow the recipes. So next is matter recombination data. This this takes in a couple of energy scientists. So the original reason, as I was saying earlier, that we built all of this stuff here at the bottom of the energy science um, column is because you need lots and lots of the energy ca uh, cards for, or at least for, for particularly for uh, matter one, and then you need a couple of them for matter two as well. So Tristan's come along here, he's broken those out from, ooh, a long way up. These are these are produced very, very early on. Okay, so there's, there is a, a, a tangle, yeah, there, you can see a tangle of sort of spaghetti and stuff around here. So he's pulling out the, yeah, he's pulling out the uh, the lightning ones from here and the uh, barbell ones from up here, getting them onto the, onto the belts and bring them down fine and they can go in here to be made into, into this data uh, again uh, yet again AI cores no wonder we seem to get through a lot of those and, and matter as well and this time you get some uh, this time you get you sometimes get the AI core back again so again there's presumably going to be a yes there we go so a, a loop back on that and it's also producing junk data cards so those need to be thrown away and put onto the into the disposal system over here and I've said it before but I'll say it again I'm I'm so glad we did a uh, a single disposal system to rule them all on this on this because it's it's just so easy to have one belt that you can just chuck all of the random rubbish on that you want to get rid of, whether it's scrap or junk data cards or even good data cards, barrels of miscellaneous contaminated fluids, any of that stuff, and we've then set up the recycling facility to deal with all of it, and that's so much easier. Maybe we should have used trains to take it over a train load at a time, rather than having massive long belts running all the way up the middle of our, our rail system like this. Most of the time it's absolutely fine, but when the material science kicks in, then you tend to get this sort of thing going on, and it's a bit of a... it gets a little bit busy. But generally, it's absolutely fine, and we, we haven't had too many problems with it yet, or at least no problems that we haven't been able to fix. So yes, I'm glad, I'm glad we did it like that. And then again, oh, this is taking in matter, and this is not giving any of it back, so that's quite greedy. Uh, but it is generating the data cards that we need. Then finally down here at the bottom, matter manipulation, which takes in another one of the orange cards, and it also takes in the the fiery hot ones. And I think I think I already had those being brought over. Yeah, I think this was the train set I set up because I had the um, the snow no the yeah the the explosions and the fires were coming in here. And Tristan has required more fire down here, which is combining with force field data to see if you can burn through a force field. Who knows? Um, and this one again, you have oh this one this one's really weird. This one gives up gives back particle stream, which can then be fed back down here into making the matter. So that's that's nicer. I suppose, um, but it's also a little bit weird to be doing it like that. To be to be producing particle stream from one of these uh, from one of these steps when it doesn't really go into the production of it. It's yeah, that's 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 a strange one. I don't know what we're going to do with this in the future. Whether we're going to start then piping it off to 
somewhere somewhere nearby that requires particle stream. Um, there are other things on this along here that require it. So like the oh the microwave bacon data requires it. So it's pretty likely that as long as we keep things reasonably balanced and have a suitable amount of storage space, we'll probably be able to leave this running and producing its 40 particle stream per two two data cards and other things further up the str up, up the system here will be able to use that up and and and, and keep and keep it balanced um but we will see i mean this this is all assuming that at some point in the future we're going to re remove this and move over to making matter in the in the cheaper ways which i'm, I'm sure we will but uh, but we'll we will then need some sort of sink for this and uh, but i think we can do that and that brings us back down to the matter production at the bottom of the chain here which is pretty much where i started and so yes, this is this is now you can see actually the the matter catalog ones are starting to run really really short. So we're definitely going to speed need to speed up the product, production of those. Or or are we? Because as I say, when we switch over to the other method of producing matter, we won't need as much of it. Oh, it's a tricky one. And so we've then got the broad matter catalogs coming out up here, as we said, um, by taking in all the cards and the thermofluid. They're being just dropped onto a belt over here, where they can then be loaded into the system over here to be put into the trains. And the train, is, as you can see, is filled up reasonably, ha is filled up happily with with tier one matter catalogs. Is filling up slowly with tier two matter catalogs. There's, it's got we've got 38 of them in that wagon and 38 of them in that wagon so far. So it's not exactly running quickly, but eventually we'll get a decent number of those in, and we can we can transport it over. And as before, all the scrap up here is is used for. When, so when you turn the uh, the broad matter catalogs into matter matter science two, the the extra thing you need is scrap, and I still think that's really weird. But we do have a train full of it, so that's fine. We can we can transport that over there. It 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 it, it, it it's an easy enough solution to uh, to to find here. Uh, so we just need this to fill up, or maybe we don't want it to fill up, because if we go and have a look at the researchers again, turning raw rare metals into, into matter is a research that's going to cost 350 researchers, including the uh, the tier 2, the matter science packs there. Copper is the same, another 350, as is iron. In fact, they, they all seem to be 300? Yeah, they're all 350 each. Oh no, the 500 for the, uh, for the um, exotic materials. Fine. But 350 for the ones we actually care about. And so if we started off with, with a good one of those, well, you can see each of these catalogues will turn into, into four, uh, four Matter Science Pack 2s. And we've got a productivity bonus of a pl plus about 150% over here. So for each catalog, each ma broad matter catalog we make, we can do 10 sciences, which means we actually only need 35 of those catalogs in order to make, in order to do one of the one of the, those researches I was looking at. So that means with the pile of stuff we've got so far, we could actually do two of them. So we could do iron and copper or copper and rare metal, or whatever we think two, two, the, the two most important ones are to do. And then we could get rid of this matter processing facility down here entirely and stop using these matters catalog ones and then the system that's running up here will be more than enough to put to uh, to produce produce the matter catalogs that we need because then they'll only be taken away for science so i think that's probably going to be the best way to do it so we'll be able to stop burning through these packs quite as quickly and just get and get things stabilized and move forward so next time yeah tristan is very very close to having this working i believe if we look over in the science area we can see that he has already upgraded these these two machines and made a bit of extra space. He's gone from the research service to the advanced research service because apparently these ones weren't good enough for him or at least for matter science too. So he's done the upgrade here. He only needs the um the, the catalogs start coming in from here and these are look, look like they're about ready if we take if we take a closer look at one we can see that we have uh okay, we have some scrap we have significant data we don't have the catalogs yet uh we've got the old we've got the tier one science packs but we need to bring in some matter and i believe he's put in a train to supply that yes down here just right right next to it he's sque he's put in it put in a station he had to squeeze that in a little bit because apparently um i think he I, th I think um he reckoned i put crammed the stations in a bit too close together here i put in the pipe work to bring the matter in but didn't leave him with the station to bring it in into so it was a, a little bit cross with me for that but yeah he's got the, he's now got the pipe coming over here um and then a train will come in well once we've got a decent amount of matter being produced which is also a slight problem here we can have a train turn up and bring it over drop it off here and go bubble 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 along the pipe and, and be loaded into the machines and then we can start producing those uh, those matter science two packs so we are going to need a little bit more matter than i was suggesting but there is also but there is a train down here ready to ready to grab some of it so as soon as we have any spare it can be put into this train we just don't have any spare yet so <laughs> it's all been being stolen away to be used by the uh, by the research oh and then there's a pump been put in the wrong way around here as well he did this so we wouldn't randomly create our first uh, matter science 2 packs during the videos because we haven't really got there on stream so that would be a little bit a little bit weird and we did, don't didn't really want to have that happen so yeah we'll, uh, I'll put the pump back as it was uh, eventually we'll we'll have made enough matter we can put some in the train and send the train over I, I do think it's going to be worth trying to do the um the, the, the ones for turning turning ores into matter as early as possible just because this burning burning through all the matter one catalogs 
it just feels a bit expensive and a, a rather silly way to produce matter when we can get something else really quite quickly. And so since matter 2 is the second and final type of matter science, that's the, that means this area will then be essentially done. Now, there are other things you can do with matter. So as we saw from the uh, looking at the researchers over here, you can turn what you can turn for example imacite into matter, but you can also turn uh, matter into imacite. That does require charged matter stabilizers. Um, I don't know how worthwhile this is going to be, whether it's going to be useful for some some of the more exotic materials like potentially imacite. It might be handy to be able to create a bit of extra um, just where, wherever and whenever we need it. But I think it, we, at the moment we seem to be doing quite well at just pulling it out of the ground. So, uh, w but we'll see. Uh, come back in a, in a f to a future video and we'll find out whether we actually did any of the, we've done anything with matter other than just producing the science that we, we need over here. Meanwhile, down on the ground, there has been further expansion and wiping out of biters. So uh, Tristan has been building out to the uh, the east, down in this sort of area down here, and then sort of making his way gradually up towards the sort of the more northern parts of the planet. Uh, Mark has been out on gone out out west. He's been clearing out an area over here. And quite interestingly, if I turn on the electric networks like this, you can see the difference in their um, in their styles of the way they've been building out. So Mark has built these uh, long trails of wire that, well, when you when you zoom out far enough, when you zoom in far enough, sorry, they look very, very square, or well, there's a bit of wiggly stuff on the end here, and this one, actually, this one's very, very wiggly. Um, and then, presumably, along here, there, well, he's been, run, he's been running the the uh, massive uh, space pylon things out, out like this, and presumably on the end of them, if I can find the end, yes, then he's put it sticking in sort of a, a couple of a couple of laser artillery turrets, and those are then able to wipe out all the biters in, uh, in quite a large area. And I imagine there's probably a couple on the end of here as well, and or maybe this area's been cleaned up. Uh, it looks like yes, he looks like he's been re recycling his uh, laser turrets like a, like a, a good per a good person should. Or there's a, there's a bunch over here because this is this is sort of a front line, so we're, he's presumably going to extend up this way in the next next time he goes off doing combat and then start attacking these guys. And the uh, laser artillery turrets have quite an impressive range, as you can see here. The, these ones are more than capable of protecting this uh, this crossing point or this narrow choke point along here, and so we don't have any worries about these biters coming in. Uh, and they've been they're being, being really effective about it. You can also see these there's a slight donut shape here with the with the uh, bit of minimum range in the middle there. But again, they they do enough damage and they fire fast enough that unless you get an absolutely huge attack coming through, you don't really need the extra defenses in the middle. That said, that said, he's put the extra defenses in over here. Over on the other side. Tristan has not been tidying up quite so much, but he's been he's been building out in a more roboporty way, as is his as is his standard way. So we've got the the uh, the grid of pylons with and then pylons of roboports. And apparently the reason main reason he's been doing like this is because one of our blueprints just is is that. As you can see up here, we have this this blueprint which is for putting down basically expanding the roboport network. And so Tristan has been using that one just because it's there. And so that means we have this quite large area of, of roboportage and, uh, and and lots and lots of pylons. And then down at the end of it, in much the same way as I was saying with Mark, well yes, he started leaving uh, leaving these laser artilleries along here as well. So again, if we zoom out to this view, you can see that quite large areas are protected along here. Uh, so he first, I think he first sort of pushed out this way and you saw this last week, but now he's been extending it all the way up here. So we've got many, many, many more areas that are thoroughly laseried. All these biters around here are dead. It's just the, uh, the, the, the satellite view hasn't up, uh, hasn't updated. So if I zoom in and go back into NavSat mode, I can sort of pan around here and you can see on the mini map up there in the top right, all these biter nests are disappearing. Uh, except those ones, um, because they've already been absolutely slaughtered by the by the laser artillery turrets. Uh, it's just the the radar hasn't updated, which is a little bit a little bit silly, but you know it, it does seem to be working quite quite effectively. Uh, he has, uh, and yeah, so this the, the with the uh, with them coming out this this uh, these sort of with this sort of spacing, it does mean that the uh, the blobs meet in the middle, and he does, and he's insure, insure, he ensures that if he if he extends all of these all the way out to the edge of the planet. It will kill everything. So um, yes, yeah, so that's uh, giving him some um, some fun things to play with. The the downside of the the use of the building like this is that we now have 360 laser artillery turrets set up using 18 gigawatts of power, which is um, more power than everything else in our base put together. And they're not even firing at the moment. If we look back over the last, um, I was going to say, if we look back over over time, and actually you get you get these little blips with of them firing, but it's not it doesn't actually make that much of a difference. But if I zoom out to the ten hour view, you can see how about seven or seven and a bit hours ago they started build they started we built some the first few laser artilleries. I reckon these are the ones that are probably going all the way around the edge of the sort of the perimeter of the base, keeping us safe. And then Tristan started expanding and expanding and expanding. And now we have 360 of them, and they're using all of the power in the world. But I guess, I mean, I suppose that's probably okay. 
but it has meant that Mark has then had to do some further expansion and further upgrade of our solar field up here. So we now have these massive quantity of, sol of, uh, of the red solar panels because these are the ones that we can make relatively easily and cheaply. And so we have we now have 9,100 of them producing about almost 30 gigawatts, which is, is, is in fact more than enough to keep all of this stuff happy. Sure, we have, we have um, loads and loads of power available. Actually, I, I might be cheating a little bit here. Did I turn the lights on? I can't remember. Yes, I've turned the lights on, so we're actually only producing 35 gigawatts, but it's still enough to keep this to keep this system happy. Um, uh, it, it's enough to enough to satisfy all of those turrets. And I guess at some point, once the uh, once the expansion has been completed, and we maybe don't need quite so, and we don't need quite so much, a few of them could perhaps be picked up, um, even if we haven't killed all the biters. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It, it, it's keeping them out of trouble anyway, I suppose, giving them something to do while they're while they're, while they're waiting for, um, for for material science to be made and matter to be uh, investigated and all that sort of stuff. But I don't think. Going around blowing up biters can really compete with making an entirely new science pack and one that we've ne none of us have ever made before because we've not played Crastorio 2 before and this is not part of space exploration. This is all K2. So I think this is quite this is this is a bit more different, interesting, exciting, and so on. So I'll, uh, which is why I, I I led the video with it. So I think this is a good, going to be a good point to stop. Um, even if we are st str still struggling with the uh, with the matter catalog ones along here, uh, we'll, we'll we'll try and get that fixed up next time. And as I say, maybe maybe by moving over to a different recipe for the for the um, matter sciences. So uh, there will be, as I as I was saying in the last video, there will be no streams this week because I'm going to be in the theatre all week. So uh, nothing nothing happening. Oh, I won't say nothing happening this week because we're still going to be having a video coming out on Wednesday. And what video comes out depends on whether you're a, a supporter or not because supporters get a, a week early access. So if you want to, if you want that, if you want to become a supporter, then uh, become a, a Twitch subscriber, a YouTube member, or uh, drop in some donations on Ko-Fi, and we'll uh, we'll add you in. Uh, come along to the Discord if it doesn't seem to be working. And then uh, there'll be a, another Factorio video coming out on Friday where I'll talk about what uh, what Mike has been up to and a few other little bits and pieces around the place as well. So uh, so the third and final part of the of the update from the, from the last stream. The week after we will be streaming again. Things will be getting more or less back to normal, but the uh, the days are going to be shifted around a little bit. I'm going to start doing the uh, the Factorio streams on Monday and satisfactory on Wednesday with the videos following over the weekend as well as you as 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 the way it used to be before I started doing this this particular panto so things will be returning more or less to the the old normal um the, the week after so I hope you'll stick around and, and come along and join us for all of that uh thank you very much for watching and I shall see you next time bye bye <laughs>